Hey guys, I'm with one of our clients, Matt. Matt, thank you for having us to your house. Thanks for coming over. Matt has a club. Can you tell us about your club? Yeah, we have a really awesome club um, and only uh, very special people are part of it. Basically, we have, uh, we moved into a new neighborhood here about a few months ago and this club is made of owners that all have mold issues and pretty severe mold issues for brand new houses. And these aren't houses that you would expect to have mold issues, at least me as an, as an ignorant home buyer. Uh, and uh, the club continues to grow, which is sad. Um, you know, this is a community of about 2,000 homes total-ish in our larger community, but in our neighborhood of houses that were just built, I mean, on our street alone, probably 50% of the Right houses. now, there's a restoration going on two doors down. Uh, right, right here, right now. Tony Gomes, he did some testing, and I'm gonna reference some of the reports that he's done on this house. Well, welcome to our house. Two months after we moved in, one of my neighbors who had been and in our neighborhood about four months said they found mold. Um, and I kind of laughed at it. I thought it was like a one-off situation. And so anyways, I came up to, to my HVAC closet here, which now doesn't have any doors. Initially, I took off the bottom of this unit and I found it was just covered in mold basically in here. And I looked up and along the side of the, um, the plenum here, there was a bunch of mold on this side and this side was really bad. Tons of mold going back there. And you could smell it, you know, the moment we opened the doors, you could smell it, it was, it was, it was nasty. So that was the initial intro to what, what's going on. When you spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on something, mm -hmm. and then somebody tells you that it might be infested or broken, you're like, no way, I paid way too much money for that to be true. I am not willing to face reality that yeah. that might be the case. Yeah, no, I, I definitely, if there's an issue, I'd rather just face the issue and get through the issue. Like to me, like lawsuits, one thing, because the annoyance and the time spent and, and, the, and the frustration, but I, honestly, I just want a, a healthy, happy house that I'm not concerned about. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting in the neighborhood because you can see the, the levels. Mm -hmm. My house was one of the later ones built, kind of being the back of the cul-de-sac here where neighborhood finished a little bit earlier than us, you can see it spread to, you know, the, the vents and then the neighborhood uh, who was up a little bit further, you know, now they're having issues inside growing in the walls. And it's just, you can, I can see my future, you know, yeah. if I don't act, you know, right. a lot of my neighbors who have the same model house in all of their upstairs vents, they have mold coming around the outside of the vent. Uh, and on top of that, on the other side, in the, on the ceiling side in the attic spaces, there's, there's mold everywhere as well. And this is your children's bedroom yeah so children's bedroom children's bedroom um multiple neighbors have had their kids who live on this side of the house consistently sick um, my kids have, have been sick for quite a, quite more than they have for normally you know their kids they get sick you know right. it happens but sure. it's it's been a noticeable amount of sickness increasing okay well um so they took the doors off because the doors so so here's the thing this is a common taylor morrison design apparently there are two HVAC systems here. One of them serves this floor. And as you would expect, the ductwork is going up into the attic and it's going across and doing all the ceiling registers that you see around the ceiling. But the other one serves the lower floor and its ductwork is also going up into the attic so that it can go across and then jet down through some kind of a chase. Have you seen this shaft where it goes down? I haven't seen it, but I imagine it's, yeah. Wow, holy moly. <laughs> You're so ninja. I have never seen an attic this full of ductwork. Oh, it's like a, it's like a spider's net. It is. It's like, yeah, I mean, it's impassable. I can't even figure out how to get around up here. It's like you've never been in an attic before. <sighs> wow. I don't know what this is. So that right there. It's bare metal of the duct boot. And their solution, one of them was to pull, they needed more airflow around these, so they pulled away the insulation actually. That's very interesting. There's some more right over there. They did the same thing. So, no insulation, but they air sealed. What have they done? They pulled away the insulation thinking that that's the problem, they need more air circulation. Cameras pointing at cameras. Ding! <laughs> and so that is major uh, vulnerability then at that point. The doors that they put onto these closets, which is a very common feature if you're buying one of these places, you might want to consider 
louvered doors, which is one of the things that Tony was recommending to you. They took them off because they knew that when you close these things in here and they get cold and they maybe depressurize this closet, which is what I would have tested with this. But of course, you can't run pressure testing without doors. Uh, did he make these holes? They put, oh yeah, when, so when they came back and remediated, this was part of their, I don't know what, why did they put Those all these Those are test holes? ports. Yeah, they're trying to test the pressures inside of all this stuff. So that I'm interested. These guys did that? Yes. Okay, that's cool. So what they did, they came with a mold. They t took the entire plywood out. The entire This was completely open to the attic space. They took the plenums off. They took this unit down, mm. cleaned it, um, redid the plywood, put it in here, tried to seal everything, and that, that's where we stand now. They say they're going to give me louvered doors. They say they're going to you know, paint it and make it look a little more aesthetically pleasing. But mm -hmm. that's the extent of the current fix that I'm aware of. Okay, and I like this too. This is very nice because a lot of the times I have to have my clients, did I have to have you do this, go outside and read your product number? No, what's interesting is I, I did verify because one of my neighbors says three ton, but they verified it. It's actually like a two and a half or it's, okay. a, it's not sized Got it. Yes. Okay. That so. says three. And yeah, this three one says... ton plus two and a half tons, five and a half tons. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that Tony found in reviewing the manual J calculation, which anyone can do if they give you enough pages, it was not sized for five and a half tons. They put in extra and they were taking credit for stuff that was going to heat up the house, which is actually not here. Like the fresh air dilution yeah. from outside yeah. is not actually installed in the sun. Uh, not that I'm aware of, at least. Yeah. Yeah. The other mold assessor they were using, they, they fired them, and the mold remediation company, they fired them as well, uh, because they were saying Taylor Morrison wasn't, from my understanding, Taylor Morrison wasn't fixing the way the remediators want them to be fixed, and so they fired them. This new mold assessor comes from Texas. We find out that she's not licensed in the state of Florida. We call this, we call our DBPR, the Department of Business and Regulations, and um, they're like, yeah, she's not. You see, you look at her number and it says application in process. And we're like, okay, does this mean she's good to good to legally assess mold? They're like, no, she's not allowed to assess mold. And so we tell Taylor Morrison, and they're like, oh no, she has an exemption with uh, with T with uh, TM as a company. And we're like, can you show us that? Like, what is the documentation? They're like, no, she has an exemption, and that's it. Our other neighbor, who's same thing, she was she she had to leave the house for two months because they had such remediation that had to happen. They came back. Taylor Morrison said they were going to pay for the for the for the stay for the hotel and everything. The only way they they would actually pay for the bills when she came back was to sign a non disclosure. And the non disclosures, I don't know if you've seen some of the pictures in our thread, but the non disclosures are laughable. It's right. you know classic. You're not going to sue me for anything else. Right. But on top of that, like they'll even restrict access to your own house. They give them unlimited access to your house. It's uh, the non disclosures are just like absolutely Criminal. Un unacceptable, yeah, for sure. So, the HVAC did not just all in one go down to the first floor and then it get distributed through the floor, mm. it actually separates up here in the attic, so it's all broken That's up into like its individuals. That's why it looks like that way. And then they go down individually through a bunch of different places, which is even more so, yeah, like I think that the likelihood of being able to seal all those penetrations and seal the ductwork versus just calling it quits at the roof and not worrying about any of it is probably I'd go for the roof. But then you have the same issue, which is like, is the guy, have you ever seen a spray foam ring? No, this is what Tony said. Tony told me, he's like, the concern is the lowest man on the totem pole is the one who's doing the spraying. Right, right. and he's in a full body Tyvek suit, hot as hell. And then he's also in a full mask, like a space suit, that's got oxygen pumped into the back, pressurized. Oh geez. Yeah. And then he's, so he can only see this much. So he's gonna be stepping around up there. I don't know how he's gonna not step through the ceiling and also not step on any of the ducts. Yeah, I mean, okay, I, I so. think you'd have to suck out all the stuff on the floor first and then spray the attic. Uh, well, you're gonna have to do that no matter what. So yeah, yeah. If, you, if they are offering to suck it up, mm -hmm. then I'd say, yeah, have them do that. Mm -hmm. Then at least you've got a blank slate to start with. You have enough HVAC power to make it through. What is interesting is if you have an oversized HVAC system, mm -hmm. then in closing that space, that one of the downsides is, well, no, we have to condition that space. Yep. And like, you've got the spare ammunition. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So why don't we just cut some supply registers in the yep. ducts in the attic and then spill some of that into the attic to make sure that the attic is the same temperature humidity as the rest of the house. Yep. So I think actually like that might be a good, I, I want to look at the um, the reports sure. from Tony. Yep. But, but depending on what, you know, which avenue Matt decides to take, we're going to, you know, keep on this thread so make sure you're subscribed make sure you comment below if you have other things to uh to add hopefully matt will come over and chime in on the comments if you guys have questions about this particular case uh like and subscribe tune in next time